Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. I'm Paul Turley, Principal Consultant with Pragmatic Works, and I'm going to talk to you about Power BI licensing. This is a question that comes up with clients all the time. What does it cost to use Power BI in my business and in my enterprise? Well, I'm going to answer the uh, question, what is the cost of Power BI? Power BI is free. Well, that's true from a certain perspective. Power BI is free. And going back five years ago, when James Phillips took over the Power BI product team, Satya Nadella asked him to streamline the product and make it successful, and that's exactly what he did. And the way that he um, approached that is his mantra was five seconds to sign up and five minutes to wow. And the way that he accomplished that goal was he led his development team to create a very streamlined, very elegant development tool called Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is the tool that we use to create very simple desktop reports as well as enterprise scale reports that can be used by literally tens of thousands of people. Power BI Desktop is the tool that's used to do all of that and Power BI Desktop is free. You can go to powerbi.com or you can go to the Windows 10 uh, application store and you can just install it. If you install it from the App Store, by the way, it will automatically update itself every month. Otherwise, you, you get the little toaster pop-ups and you can optionally uh, update it. But Power BI Desktop is completely free and it's completely unrestricted. So you can import just limitless data up to the limits of the hardware on your desktop computer. So that's good news. So I can use Power BI for free as an individual user. I can also sign up for a subscription. I can publish to the Power BI service and use reports in my web browser, again, free. I can publish those reports to the web so they can be shared uh, with other users around the world for free but there's no guarantee that that is secure. When I want to collaborate with other developers and users, and when I want to share my reports in a secure manner, that's when I have to start paying for licensing. So what does that cost? Well, a Power BI Pro license currently today, this is retail pricing, is just under $10 US per user per month. Now that's subject to change and you may be eligible for discounted pricing. If, if you work in uh, education, in the public sector, for a not-for-profit, Microsoft offers discounts to a number of different categories of businesses and organizations. And uh, just from my experience working with clients in these different categories, the discounts can be pretty significant. Uh, you could um, license Power BI for a fragment of that retail price if you work in education, public sector, or not-for-profit uh, at least. And, and so check with Microsoft um, Sales. If you have a relationship with Microsoft Field Sales, it's definitely worth asking the question, are there discounts uh, available for me? So, um, so that's the, the, the current price today. Every single user who uh, uses a report, who authors a report, or wants to publish a report will need a Power BI Pro license that you'll need to pay for. Except if you work in a large organization where that, that cost can add up, you have the option of, of upgrading to Power BI Premium. Now, Premium is actually two different things. One, it's a pricing model that allows you to essentially allow anybody in your organization to use and interact with reports, and they don't have to be licensed individually. And so there's a, typically a, a threshold, and there's a pricing calculator out on the Power BI site that will help you kind of figure out what's most cost effective for you. So if you have a Power BI premium license, that means that if you need to author or publish reports, you still need to buy a pro license for any developer who does that. But for anyone consuming reports, using and interacting with reports that other people build, um, those reports, once they're published in, to the the Power BI service, they can be packaged along with dashboards in what's called a workspace app. And then that workspace app can be shared with anybody in the organization and they're free to use that under the premium licensing. Now premium licensing, uh, the P1 SKU, 
and I'll explain what that means. That's the entry point for, um, for premium capacity licensing. With unlimited use throughout your organization, um, retail price today is just under $5,000 US per month. Now that's a pretty big, big step up and, and uh, some folks uh, suffer a bit of sticker shock when they hear that, but it can be more cost effective than just buying pro licenses for everyone. Now, it's also capacity. And what that means is that with Power BI Premium, you get a certain amount of dedicated capacity within your tenant, and you don't have to compete with what we call noisy neighbors or other Power BI customers um, who are using uh, a shared uh, capacity tenant. So how do you purchase Power BI Premium? Well, two different ways. One, go to the Office 365 store, the, the Office store, and you can simply purchase it there, apply it through the Office 365 admin portal, and then you can apply that capacity to your Power BI subscription. So that's fairly simple to do when you buy right from Microsoft. Now, keep in mind that it's the Office 365 admin who applies the license, and then it's the Power BI admin who adds the capacity to their tenant. And if that's one person, if that happens to be you, that's nice and easy. If you're in a large organization where there's kind of a, a division of tasks, you need to get those people in the same room, get them talking and coordinate um, that, that handoff. And uh, if you're not an Office 365 shop, but you've purchased Power BI and intend to use premium, you'll still go to the Office portal to um, purchase and apply that license. Now, if you work with a value-added reseller who actually you, know, you buy your Microsoft licenses from, let's say you work with Dow, Ingram Micro, or CDW, or one of these value-added reseller companies, um, and you're getting volume discounts and, and uh, bundling uh, services through a company that sells you these licenses, make sure you work with somebody who applies the license correctly to your office subscription. I go out to clients all the time and there's a little bit of confusion because typically folks at these companies don't understand Power BI real well and it's really important to make sure that that gets up, applied to your Office 365 tenant that'll then show up in the office portal you then apply the license and then you can apply the um, capacity to your power bi subscription so just have that conversation coordinate that because it doesn't happen automatically and uh, so that could be at at a discount so um, why would i want to use premium well it lets you uh, exceed thresholds um, like uh, there's a one gigabyte threshold per data model under Power BI Pro with premium that moves up to three gigabytes of compressed data per data model uh, in a P1 capacity. And then, then there are other um, capacities that go up from there if you have larger models and, and larger implementations. Um, so what if I'm using Power BI on premises? If I want to use the Power BI report server, then there are two different ways to license that. One, it comes with premium. So if you've bought premium capacity for your Power BI service, you can also deploy reports on premises into Power BI report server. Now, if you can't use reports in the, the uh, cloud at all, and you're only planning to deploy on prem, that's probably not a very cost effective way to do that. So you can use your SQL server licensing to also um, license your Power BI report server. And that requires SQL Server Enterprise Edition with software assurance. Keep in mind that anyone who authors and deploys also still needs to have a Power BI Pro license. So those are your two options, premium capacity or uh, SQL Server Enterprise with software assurance to be able to use Power BI report server. I mentioned uh, the, the term SKU, which means stock keeping unit. It's kind of a funny term to use with uh, software today that doesn't actually come in boxes and it's not stocked in warehouses. But that's the term that Microsoft uses for all of their products. You have one more option to license Power BI premium capacity if you need those features. And uh, Nick Lee did a post uh, just a little bit earlier where he kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but I'm going to talk about this. So rather than just 
signing up for the $5,000 a month Power BI Premium um, P1 license, what you can do is you go to the Azure portal and you can add a Power BI embedded service to your account and then go to your Power BI tenant and add that as a capacity. Now, if you start with an A1 SKU, which is the least expensive Power BI embedding uh, service, then that gives you capacity that then you can scale up and scale down like a lot of the Azure services uh, you can do. So if you scale that up to an A4 level, it's more cost effective, at least to get started, than a P1, but it has the same features and you would have all of the same capabilities as you would have with a P1. And if you wanna scale that down to save cost during development time, it's gonna turn off some features, but you still have the capacity associated with your Power BI tenant. Well, I hope that this has been helpful and uh, perhaps distilling some of the mysticism around Power BI. If you need help, we're always here, and for more information, follow the links below.